Have you checked the Hey everyone, welcome back to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. And you got Jaime and Fuego here. And we are back to talk about another new horror release. Uh, this one is, of course, Disney's Haunted Mansion. Not the Haunted Mansion, as I just discovered looking up pictures and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, just Haunted Mansion. And this is, a cor of course, another attempt at what they attempted last, I believe, in 2003. 20 years ago. Uh, yep, yeah. yep, 20 years ago. Same year that Freddy vs. Jason came out. Um, that's, mm. that's my 2003 benchmark there. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, this is a new attempt. An attempt that felt like it was trying to be a bit more close to the to the lore of the ride or at least a little bit closer to the ride and what they portrayed but I, I, in all honesty i've only seen the original 2003 version once and i don't remember if if they did a lot of that stuff in it so i could be very wrong in saying that this felt more close uh to the to the ride than that one but i will start us off because we always start off with our overall thoughts then we talk mm -hmm. about the uh, the story, the character, you know, the actors, the effects, all that good stuff in turn. And by the way, if you can, in case you haven't been able to tell in our recent reviews, it's just easier for us to avoid copyright by not overlaying footage. But I'll go ahead and put the trailer down in the comments or in the uh, in the description box. So if you want to look up parts of the movie while. I always ov only overlay trailer bits anyway, so go ahead and pull it up in another window and have it playing the whole time if you want. Yeah, uh, it's only have access to anyway, right? It's a yeah, trailer, exactly. You know, it's something that went and, you know, is on streaming already. Sometimes so. they put yeah. clips up on YouTube yeah, that I can pull from, but it's it just it's not worth it because we get copyright claimed immediately. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, feel free to do that if you so choose. My overall thoughts for 2023's Disney's Haunted Mansion was that it was a little bit scarier than I think some kids would be cool with, um, but it's not quite interesting enough to be like a teenager's horror movie. Um, it's it's a little bit slower and uh, kind of boring at times. Uh, some of the effects look pretty good, but overall, it it was kind of just meh for me. It wasn't really, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't really good either. So. I don't know. I'm kind of in a in a weird in between place, kind of like the ghosts of the mansion. Yeah, that was the exact phrase you just beat me to it. In, in, <laughs> in between, because I was kind of of the same ilk, man. Where I I found enough to appreciate about this movie from like a set design standpoint and the costuming. Beautiful and everything. set design. And, and the cast is great. You know, I mean, and there's some genuine laughs. It was just the genericness of everything else. And since I mean, I I haven't seen the Eddie Murphy movie, so I can't compare it to mm. that. And despite having been to Disney a number of times, I've never been on the Haunted Mansion ride. It was closed oh. one year when I tried to go. They were, like, renovating it or something, and then there was another time when I was too young. My parents were like, no, you have nightmares already. We're not going to take you in for that. So I've, I've never even been on the ride. So all those Easter eggs that I've heard from a lot of people are present within the film. Oh, yeah. I can't really, you know, claim to. They all went right over my head. That's so, a bummer. But I... It's really the cast, and most notably, Lakeith Stanfield. That guy kicks ass in pretty much everything I've seen him in, whether it's, you know, uh, to, But Sorry to Bother You, I think, was the, the one that he really, the Boots Randolph film that he really got some initial praise for, and then he was in um, uh, Knives Out and lots of great dramatic work. So he's really good in this, and he straddles that line, in my opinion, between the emotional thread of everything and then also with, you know, interacting with, these, you know, Danny DeVito and uh, Tiffany Haddish, who's ridiculous, but maybe the funniest in the movie for me. So I don't know, man. It, it was just very thin on narrative, very familiar, and so that it was fine. So I guess I'm kind of in in a similar boat with you, man. Where it wasn't bad, but it definitely wasn't like when Pirates came out because they've been right. showing that in all the marketing, you know, where it like transcends the ride and becomes something big and badass, you know, even more so than than its roots. So yeah, that's about it. It's, uh, yeah, everyone, everyone, not everyone, but I've seen a few people say it's got some genuine laughs. I legitimately don't remember laughing a single time. Chops. I might have cracked a <laughs> smile here and there, but nothing really, like, it, the, the timing of everything was just a little bit off, you know? Uh -huh. Like, um, so it didn't really hit me or tickle me in that way. Uh, like, I was, I guess, maybe hoping. I will say that the opening when, um, you know, uh, Rosario Dawson and her son 
enter the home for the first time and the kid is seeing all this crazy stuff happen and by the way i loved like you said a good shout out for the uh the set design the production design of the film was really incredible throughout uh, but especially the kid's bedroom where the bed itself like the the baseboard of it has like triangular things right and then it's a canopy bed but the entire sheet of the canopy has been ripped down and the remaining pieces look like triangles pointing down so basically it looks like the bed is gonna eat him if he lays in it mm -hmm. like it's just a giant mouth and i was like that's fucking really cool attention to detail and stuff um so i liked that and then the scare with the bride um in that opening scene to me was on the level where if i had seen it when i was a kid it would have scared me as much as the library ghost in the original ghostbusters did because that thing scared the crap out of me when i saw it as a kid oh yeah same. and <laughs> and i think this i think this opening ghost the bride would do the same thing um so that at least was effective i did think there was some cool effective scares here and there but then it gets, you know, pretty cartoonish and over the top. I mean, I'll just dive into the story. Like I said, um, mother and son move into this mansion and uh, immediately experience ghostly activity and run. And then we switch over to Lakeith Stanfield's character who, um, you know, doesn't believe in ghosts necessarily, but he's an astrophysicist who essentially comes up with a way to possibly photograph ghosts or weird things so to speak and uh and he is called to the mansion and then uh when he enters you know he becomes embroiled in the fact that are there ghosts there are there not ghosts there it's pretty apparent there are and it's just a matter of how quickly he does or doesn't buy into it and then a bunch of other people are brought in to try and help solve the mystery of the mansion so to speak and that's basically the long and short of it without getting into a bunch of spoilery details um so the story itself was <clears throat> interesting enough i mean it was i guess plot enough for a movie but there were weird jumps um where like rosario dawson and the kid leave immediately and then the next time we go to the mansion they're just there again and we eventually learn why, but I would have liked to have seen the why, you know what I mean? So there was just some weird choices throughout with the story, but overall it played fine to me as a story. Just again, just fine. Not good, not bad, just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to be an echo chamber, but <laughs> yeah, uh, um, I did find it maybe a little funnier than you as far as from, from a writing standpoint goes. And uh, I'm trying to, uh, Katie Dippold and, that she unfortunately wrote the Ghostbusters, the, the Girlbusters movie. So I mean, maybe that primes people for not not digging this in certain cases. But also Mad TV. So lots of lots of comedic work coming into this. Um, but the laughs that hit the most for me was dumb crap, like when the the guy at the restaurant is throwing like bits of food at Danny DeVito. Like those were the dumb things that I found funny throughout the movie. Not as much the humor, actually like ghost related in this it was really like banter amongst the characters i thought owen wilson had some amusing lines just like tiffany haddish did so there was funny dialogue written for these characters but as, as far as the story goes yeah, it had a cool setup but as far as like progressing through that like grief with one character that we get some and then they just kind of dance around it a little bit and it's maybe not as effective as it could have been um and also i thought that rosario's character was written kind of boringly she didn't really have very much to do mm -hmm. besides being like oh I'm, I'm the mom and you know i don't really have a lot of laughs because there's so much other comedic talent surrounding me danny devito and you know haddish and stuff uh, jamie lee curtis was underutilized despite the fact that she's been a lot of marketing for wasn't a movie. fan of yeah, of her her choices in this honestly Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right there with you, man. So, I mean, well, yeah, I'll just continue with the acting then. Well, I, forgive me, as long yeah, as you're finished. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I know. I saw that comment, too. I'm just like, come on, guys. Like, Still? It's even harder at this point when we're not in the same room with each other. Right. And not, you know, like... You exactly. Know, I can't squeeze your dick to get you to shut up if I need to. Woo! <laughs> um <laughs> but uh yeah acting wise I, I was a fan of some not as much of a fan of others i thought danny devito was i mean i didn't oh it's He's hamming it up it's danny devito <laughs> like it's it wasn't really anything special i thought lakeith stanfield was so good 
mm-hmm. that it almost felt out of place compared to everyone else's more ham-fisted portrayals, mm-hmm. which I guess he's supposed to be the grounded element, but damn, everyone else character. is so, like, everyone else is so over the top that it just feels, his performance feels almost out of place. Yeah. Um, but it's good. It's very, very good. He got me emotional. Like, he, he, I, I don't, like, I've seen him in a lot of stuff, sure, but I don't remember him having as much of a standout scene as that one scene in particular was in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I did really like his performance, but he, he was also, I also felt a bit of, like, I'm trying to think of a, of a, of a comparison where it's a really good actor in a really effects-driven film, and you can tell that they're like, Ah, you know, like I don't know what I'm acting against. There's so a couple. It's really hard for me, happens. you know. Yeah. That's that's the impression I got it a couple of times. You know, it's like, it's almost like if you're asking Anthony Hopkins to act in a in a fully CG movie, it's like, ah, uh, you know, like they don't. That's that's yeah, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting my point across, but no, no, no. You you totally are, man. Because I've seen all of these dramatic actors doing like a Marvel movie, for instance, and you're like, wow, Harrison Ford doing a Marvel movie or whatever. And you're just like, I mean, I guess he had CG experience in these last couple indie movies. But yeah, no, that, I totally see the point. And Lakeith is a very like organic actor. Like best performance from him is Judas and the Black Messiah in my estimation. He overshadowed Daniel Kaluuya in that movie for me. So he is an exceptional actor. Academy Award nominated actor, in fact. I have not seen that. So. That I just, oh, it's so damn good. <laughs> the uh, fact that I said this dramatic. is his most powerful performance. Yeah, yeah that's right. Don't, I, I, don't I take me for a grain of salt. Like, yo, his, his Oscar nominated performance. But, I have no, not but, seen that. But, yeah, yeah, but he, but he brought the chops in this. And so, yeah, you do make a good point, man. And the fact that everybody else was so goof-tastic in this that him, that you, you can only counter so much where it feels like the tones are starting to clash a little bit. And uh, to, but but they did bring it back decently with his motivation because he's a skeptic because of the, the his his tragedy and the viewpoint of that person and so so those those things were were written well enough but yeah I mean I guess we've hit most of the performances at this point except for the kid I thought the kid they give him a lot to do initially and he's really funny and his interaction with Rosario was good but then he also becomes with the exception of some interaction with Lakeith he doesn't have as much to do either because these big presents presences of comedians you know in Haddish and in DeVito and Owen Wilson are just chewing up the scenery so much the kid had a lot less to do as the movie progressed which is kind of a bummer because I thought he was really good yeah an appropriate metaphor might be that the movie starts and the three actors right um, you have Rosario the kid and Lakeith they're all in the front seat of the sedan and then every time a new character gets into the car, they squeeze into the front seat and like the other characters are forced to the back seat. And like they're they're just not given their shine anymore. So by the end, you have like a few characters that are right at the forefront and everyone else is just in the back seat like running for scraps kind of thing. So uh-huh. it's it's every new character squeezes out someone else. It's kind of like a visual representation of Kelly Bundy's head. <laughs> If yep. anyone is familiar, every time she learns something new, something else goes bye bye. So <laughs> it's a really old reference to a show called Married with Children for all Indeed. of you youngins out there watching. How could you forget about who scored five touchdowns in a single goddamn game? <laughs> I thought it was four. <laughs> scored four touchdowns in a single game. Four. Yeah, yeah. It's been so long since I've watched Al. I, I can't <laughs> remember specifics. But yeah, I, so I mean, decent performances. But yeah, I, once again, the tone clash and everything was a little little off for me did you know that was jared leto then? yeah like, I'd, so i had he heard then i'm guessing yeah or, yeah of course yeah, uh, yeah, no I no that that was actually him that was headless heard. when they were filming him and stuff oh well i know that but i was just wondering if like they actually filmed his face and then like overimposed or whatever you know the ghostliness on there so, based on know. the joker stories from mm-hmm. suicide squad I wouldn't be surprised if he literally showed up on set day one with his head in his hand going like, all right, let's shoot this. <laughs> it's like, I only have so long before they have to reattach it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um. uh, but, so, so, you know, we did mention the fact that, you know, the costuming and the set and everything was cool. I, I didn't feel like this was poorly directed. I like Justin Simeon. I've seen his previous foray into kind of goofy horror, which was bad hair which took place in the 80s oh, and okay. um, had, came out around the same time as Slacks and was about, you know, an evil weave. Uh, he also did Dear, Dear White People. So this is his first foray into, like, bigger budget, like, I mean, 
corporate filmmaking, I guess you could say. And it comes out at a lot of different instances in this movie because they name drop Costco and Walgreens and fucking the Baskin Burger Robbins King fries, right? Burger Didn't they King. bring out Burger like, King fries? Yeah, I'm like, Disney, I know you're losing subscribers and stuff. And, you know, so, at Elemental bombed, but you really need all this. So, but from a directing standpoint, I, I thought some of the like camera work was cool. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he, as the head of this snake, I mean, you know, scripting issues were really what kind of bogged this down more so than the look and from the performance of most. So, yeah, again, it was it, the story is just fine. I think it just could have used definitely some some punching up um, in a few places. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, I agree. Cinematography wise, it was very well presented. They did a lot of cool things with the effects and, you know, occasionally with the actual cinematography itself. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was mostly the effects that were given shine via the cinematography. And yeah, there was a lot of CG, but again, the, the CG ghosts don't bother me here just like they didn't bother me in Ghostbusters 2016 because they're freaking mm -hmm. blue. And it's like, yeah. okay, yeah, you don't have to, like they're, they're gonna stand out from everything else. They're gonna look CG because they're blue ghosts. But like the mansion parts and stuff like that, like, you know, for those that are familiar with the ride, you'll know why there's suddenly alligators at one point. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so those did not necessarily look the realist. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, for the most part, they, they did a good enough job and everything that looked uncanny was pretty much supposed to look uncanny except for a few things here and there. So uh, the, for the most part, the effects, I thought, did, did well for the movie. Um, yeah. Again, on a very surface level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I found the ghost look to be a little reminiscent of the Frighteners, actually. Yeah, that's uh, fair. From from the mid nine mid nineties, the uh, Peter Jackson film that mm -hmm. a lot of people have uh, have no awareness of, and great flick. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, from from a ghostly standpoint, I I guess the main villain, the dude with head in the box, the Leto character, he looked solid enough. But it the hat box did, ghost is what he's yeah, called. Yeah, hat hat box ghost. Okay. The, but the third act did definitely when it went really really effects heavy that's where i feel like it started to lose a little bit of its luster visually because there was just so much going on and you could definitely tell we're like okay we're in a very fake looking environment and i also didn't did not like the way they did the head thing with jamie lee curtis to veer back to that yeah. so yeah i didn't like the look of it but no just, I, yeah, just there was something opinion. off about that character the whole time to me yeah yeah um, I, and I don't remember how Jennifer Tilly was in the last one, so I, I can't. Was she the equivalent? I, she was the head in the in the ball. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, but yeah. So overall, the movie, it's so I would be I would hesitate to recommend you take little kids to it because definitely too scary at times for little kids. And I think it's actually PG thirteen, isn't it? This this one is yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a little bit scarier. So. I would be leery, unless you're one of those people that shows their kids horror really young, then they'll probably be okay. Um, mm -hmm. I am unfortunately not able to do that with my kids because uh, their mother prefers that way and, you know, can't can't uh, go against the moms on that one. So, mm -hmm. Not but, at all. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it was just okay. That's, that's the long and short of it. Like, I, I struggle. The movie was so meh that I struggled to even find anything other than meh to call it. <laughs> It was too long, too, man. I don't think this had any business being a little over two hours, and because it did definitely... I mean, I know they were trying to explore some of the backstory with some of these ghosts, but it, it just felt uh, more so than necessary, and even underdeveloped in some of the cases, because you know, we've got the two dueling spirits, you know, who, you know, in the duel killed each other, and then there's the star-crossed lover death aspect, which seemed to be, like, the main ghost thread, I guess. So, so that, that stuff was solid enough, but... Yeah, I don't know. It was too long. It could have been a little, little neater, a little tighter. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious who all is actually going to go out and even see this. You know, I, it's. I don't think July. many people did, right? It, it, yeah. uh, it didn't have the best opening day. It was like it's six million or something. Well. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I mean, everything's caught in the Barbenheimer storm right now, and so it just makes me wonder. Unless you're going heavy. Ba uh, Barbenheimer. Like, to me. Barbenheimer yeah. fallout. I think is yeah. the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, look what happened with Mission Impossible. Everybody thought that was going to make gangbusters, and it was just right before that. Wait, is that is that in the water? Is Fallout the subtitle for 
Mission no, 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 oh, okay. no, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. It was, Dead, wasn't it? Dead Reckoning or something. Fallout, I think, was one of the previous movies. But, <laughs> I but was yeah, literally just referring to the nuclear fallout of yeah, Barbenheimer, you know? Yeah, everything um, played to waste because of that movie. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, both of which uh, I still haven't seen. Yeah. yeah. They're they're fun. They're fun. Well, I mean. They're fun? Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer? Yeah, I'd call Oppenheimer Barbie's fun. Barbie's goofy fun. <laughs> Oppenheimer is as serious as you would expect a three-hour uh, Christopher Nolan historical epic to be but yeah haunted mansion it's not bad you know i mean but it's not great it's nothing memorable and i i think it's gonna end up on disney plus very quickly so that's at least my my prediction so i would i would not be surprised by that so um yeah i think that's gonna do it for our discussion on the haunted or excuse me haunted mansion disney's haunted (laughs) mansion Uh, let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below if you've seen it or if you even want to see it if you haven't yet let us know that as well thank you very much to all of our patrons for supporting the channel we greatly appreciate each and every one of you until next time though i've been cecil laird and gracias i've been having fuego and remember stay Stay scared. scared